project I am very familiar with is Harland. And Lucy, you are a Social Entrepreneurs Ireland alumnus, as in you've been through the process that most of the people at the Social Entrepreneurs Ireland Bootcamp are going through today. Yes. With your project. What is Harland for people who don't know? Harland is a very simple idea that started at a kitchen table, which is about Let's think differently about the benefits of creating one job over the benefits of actually cutting one job. And it's a very, very simple message that let's try and motivate the small, medium enterprises in this country, of which there are in excess of 200,000, to think differently about survival and growth and to pledge their intention to hire one person. Um, in the year that we launched in 2012, last year, um, over 6,000 small, medium enterprises pledged, well, 6,000 jobs were pledged, and in research we did at the end of the year, we know that over 4,000 people have started back in jobs. So it just shows the power, I suppose, of the collective strength of thousands of people operating in disparate you know, locations around the country, moving together on one big problem, which is unemployment. And together, they have created a pretty significant footprint of 4,000 jobs in 2012. Well, two-thirds of people who promised to give a job gave a job yes. or created a job or there was a job there for someone. Yeah, and we researched amongst them as well because I suppose the real impact and measurement of success of this is people who were previously unemployed. Hmm. So um, we did research amongst them and we know that 32% of those who were hired actually were previously unemployed. They were So they were exiting the live register to take on these new jobs. And the saving to the state alone just in those social welfare payments last year was 30 million euros. So it just shows the impact, not only, I suppose, on the nation, but also the impact on the communities and on the individuals. Because when one person has a job, they have an extra bob in their pocket, mm. and that money goes into the local community, and this is all about getting local communities um, you know, moving again and breathing a bit of life into local communities. So you're now a social entrepreneur? God. Is that something that you never thought you'd be? <laughs> we said earlier, imposter syndrome. I don't, I don't, I don't really see. I don't see that about myself at all. I just saw that. I suppose when we started this as an idea, very late one night, in a in a very simple response to a friend who was emigrating, and um, that was it. I suppose the straw, the famous straw that broke the camel's back. That they mm. say there's always something, a point, a tipping point. Mine was so insignificant in the grand scheme of things. It was just one too many of my peers who were leaving um, through no fault of their own. So mm. that's what triggered it. Um, so I suppose if that makes the journey that followed, I think it's just yeah, dogged determination and pulling on the resources that I had. I worked in marketing, I lecture, and I just pulled together all of the things that I could around that one simple idea um, to just keep pushing it. I think as well, I'm just the persistence. I just don't take no for an answer. That's and very so, true from yeah. dealing with <laughs> you. I know so this. So when you just actually just sometimes, so I, I think towards the end, some of the support uh, we received was just so that people would say, just get her to go away. So we just give her what she wants. So, right. Yeah. And how helpful were Social Entrepreneurs of Ireland or the awards program that you went through? Uh, it, it was really invaluable because um, people who enter this process, we are you know, we're trailblazing ahead on an idea that we are so passionate about that nothing else kind of really matters. Mm -hmm. um, and when you go through the Social Entrepreneurs Ireland process, they put a, a, a kind of a structure and, um, you know, you need to actually approach it almost a business plan. And I think, so when you're going to approach funders and you're going to try and, and, and pitch your idea to really, to, to kind of greater stakeholders down the line, you can't just walk in with an idea on the back of a piece of paper right. and you've got this really nice idea and wouldn't it be great if um, at the end of the day you've got to have the nuts and bolts of these are my projections this is the impact so I would never have had that figure of the 30 million saving had I not gone through this rigorous process of the impact that Ireland has made on the economy and, and had I not gone through that very you know that rigor with, mm -hmm. with the team and um, I wouldn't have been able to come out and talk um, with the figures that I that I can talk about with confidence, so it's really really important that that kind of business model um, is put around these um, you know these these amazing ideas, um, and that was really really invaluable to the point it got me and I had a meeting with uh, the Taoiseach Enda Kenny only three weeks ago, and I was able to just fire out all of you know all of the facts and figures that really you know the team in Social Entrepreneurs Ireland and their extended network of consultants 
worked with us to put this hiring model into place. So that wouldn't have happened had those steps, those back steps, um, not been taken last summer. One of the things that the judges today were talking about was the need for passion mm -hmm. and commitment. Are you still passionate? Because um, I suppose I'm looking at the economy now, and like yourself, I see how many of my friends are emigrating, and through worldirish.com, I know how many people are abroad and all of that kind of stuff. Are we, are we creating jobs in Ireland? Have we got a good economy? Was the Taoiseach optimistic about your project? Are you still optimistic? A lot of questions there, but we would no, try to... No, I, am, I still am completely uh, passionate about Ireland, mm -hmm. about... Um, what I'm passionate about is the ability of thousands of people who can pull together and move the needle on one issue. Right. And that issue is, the burning issue at the moment in our country is jobs in local communities. Mm -hmm. You know, the foreign direct investment, you know, Dublin is, is almost like separate to the rest of the country. It's like Dublin versus the rest of the country. I know where, you know, foreign direct investment, the jobs are coming in, there's shortage in IT, that's all, that's all happening. What's not happening is, you know, in small towns where you see the shops being boarded up, you see young people, you know, emigrating, and the impact on communities around the country, of, you're seeing it in the GAA clubs, and you just see the desperation. That, to me, is, we're going to see a lost generation if, right. if we don't do something about it. And I think if people just think differently about what they can do, and everyone has a part to play, not just the small medium enterprises to step up and hire one person, but also, I suppose our next wave for Ireland is, not everyone's in a position to hire, so of course we have to be realistic, but there's a load more people out there in a position to help. So what you can do is hire one or help one. And if that means even spending locally, as opposed to driving over the border or doing whatever it mm. is, we need to get serious about it is not up to the government or outside external multinationals to figure out our problem in our own domestic economy. It's up to us. And if once we all start doing that, small steps at a time, I think, yeah, I think we've got, I think we can be an example to the rest of the world of how a small nation can pull itself up by its bootstraps one job at a time. I really do. If you had one piece of advice for somebody watching this who might have an idea of how to help Ireland or to do something mm -hmm. for the country, or has seen a social change that they think that they could effect, what would that be? Because it was funny, you said just before we started the camera, you said this time last year you were sick with nerves mm. before yes. pitching. Yeah, don't doubt yourself. It is very, uh, yeah, I still regularly feel this imposter syndrome. Right. I don't feel that, you know, what I have done as an individual is worthy of where we've got to now. But I suppose... I don't know. I, 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 so if somebody out there or somebody watching this has an idea, they think, you know, follow your gut. Uh, you know, nine times out of ten, your gut is right. And then, you know, and go to people who can help you. There is a well, I mean, uh, like we raised very, very little money with Ireland, but what we actually accumulated in terms of pro bono offers of support, it was just staggering. Mm. So don't just go out looking for money. Go and ask people, can you help me? I've got this idea, but I need somebody to give me advice around this, that, or the other. And you will be amazed at the goodwill of people out there because people want to do something to help. People want it. If they're asked, nine times out of ten, the answer will be yes if they can do it. And if anybody out there can help you, how do they get in touch? Oh, get in touch. Yeah, Harlan, yeah. Well, on our either our Facebook page, our website, info at harlan.ie. If anybody's out there, wants to get involved, we want to try and get a network going around the countryside now. The next thing is like hire one, help one, um, a network around the countryside. So And you're obviously, um, you'd love to hear from people abroad as well who oh, can help. Big time. And it's interesting because we have, a, I'd say approximately half of our following uh, on Facebook is is people around the world and wow. yeah and a lot of them in America and um, because this idea actually started I teach American students not for profit okay. marketing so it actually started in a classroom with students uh, studying on a study abroad program here in Ireland and they've taken it back to the states and they started off um, a, um, a higher US campaign in America as well so um, yeah definitely the more of an international because this is an international global problem so We've we've proved that you can't this the thinking around one at a time hiring one at a time is definitely um, a model worth exploring internationally. Brilliant, Lucy. Thank you very much for your time. Thank Cheers. you.